Hello, in this session, we will talk about the ratio and the root test. I will introduce these tests and we will apply, we will practice, but I will not prove the tests here. Okay, ratio test. The ratio test in general is quite helpful to test absolute convergence. And we know that absolute convergence implies convergent. That means it is, yeah, it is quite strong tool. That's what we have to do. We have to take the formula of the infinite series, like A sub M, and we have to create a limit, calculate the limit at infinity of the term of the ratio. It's a ratio test. A sub N plus one over A sub N. And as we can see, we have to look, we have to evaluate this limit and goes to the infinity. If the limit is equal to the finite number less than one, then the infinite series A sub N is absolutely convergent. Therefore, it's convergent. If the same limit at infinity is equal to L, the finite number L, but greater than one, or equals to infinity, then the series is divergent. We may also have a situation that the limit is equal to exactly one, then the ratio test cannot be used. It's inconclusive. We cannot conclude convergence or divergence. Well, so please remember one will tell us nothing. The test is inconclusive. And this test is quite helpful, especially when we see the infinite series and the formula contains a couple of different math expressions. For instance, like power function, exponential function, uh, possibly factorial, yeah? Or, yeah, or any other, like yes, any other combination of math expressions, algebraic expressions. Also, the ratio test is not helpful if we have just the rational function, the ratio of two polynomials, because creating the next term we not changing the degree of the function. And then a sub n plus one and a sub n will have the same, yes, the same degree and the same leading coefficient. Then the limit will be always one. Yeah, when we divide this, then it's inconclusive. But by practicing, you will learn. Okay, let's start computing that limit. Okay, test the series for absolute convergence. Infinite series from one to infinity, negative one to the n, n cubed over three to the n. Well, that's mean I definitely see alternating one. We, may, we might use alternating series test, AST. However, AST is not testing absolute convergence because we have to take absolute value then and then test just this one. Maybe some comparison, maybe, maybe different tools. We have lots of tests. But as I mentioned, I see like power expression, exponential expression. I will try the ratio test because ratio test is good when we have a couple of different expressions. Okay, let's try. Let's apply ratio test. Limit as n goes to the infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Right? I will also recommend writing this down. Okay, that's mean let's create. We are good with creating the next term. That's mean what we can do. The absolute value will remove the negative one to the n. I mean I will ignore this. Okay, that means then n cube over three to the n. The next term a sub n plus one will be n plus one cube over three to the n plus one. And then a sub n is n cube three to the n. And I can write this down. A sub n is this term. A sub n absolute value is this one. And a sub n plus one absolute value is n plus one cube three to the power of n plus one. It's been a little bit of. Okay, let's try. And I don't have to hold absolute value. I can put it here, but I don't have to because every term is positive. Okay, so we have n plus one cube 
over 3 to the power of n plus 1, it is 3 to the n, 3 to the 1. And dividing, dividing by fraction means multiplying by reciprocal. Okay, we can cancel out this. And we see the degree. We have n plus 1 cube, which is 1 n cube, and we have 3 n cube. That's the limit is three. Oh, not three. <laughs> three in the denominator. N cube over three N cube, one third. Less than one. So in the, the conclusion is by a ratio test. By a ratio test, this infinite series is absolutely convergent because the limit is less than one. It's one third. Okay, perfect. We can see how nice it is. And if it's absolutely convergent, it is convergent. If we have to just check convergence. Okay, exercise number two. Test this series for absolute convergence. N factorial over 100 to the N. We may see right away when I actually grab the formula, N factorial over 100 to the N, and test just the limit at infinity. N factorial grows faster. We know from the relative rates of growth, grows faster than any exponential function. Okay? At some point, of course, at infinity. And so we may say this is divergent by n term divergence test, but I call test for divergence because it's testing just the divergence. It works. However, since we see like factorial, exponential form, I think ratio test, it's a good to practice. It's also applicable. Ratio test. Let's see. We're supposed to get divergence. For the ratio test, we will check the limit a sub n plus one all over a sub n absolute value. And we expecting number greater than one or infinity, because we know. OK, uh, n plus 1 factorial over 100 to the power of n plus 1. And dividing by a sub n means multiplying by reciprocal. We may put absolute value, but we don't have to hold it since each term is positive. OK, n plus 1 factorial, I can rewrite as n factorial times n plus 1. 100 to the n, 100 to the n, 100 to the 1. We know the exponents rules. And n factorial. And now we can cancel out this. We can cancel out this. And we're just getting a form of n plus 1 over a constant, n, infinity. And as we can also say, uh, the in this infinite series is divergent, okay, by a ratio test. It's still good. Yes, if we have to list at least two, two tests that we can prove divergence, it will be test for divergence, which is n term divergence test or ratio test. Good. Okay, exercise number three. Okay, test this one. Infinite series, one over n factorial. Yeah, this one contains only one expression, factorial, but it's still, yeah, it's still helpful to use. If we see the factorials and we don't know what to do, and since we can eliminate them easily, creating that ratio, let's use the ratio test. Because test for divergence doesn't work. Limit is zero. If limit is zero, we know nothing. Okay, I can maybe write this down just in case. Testing the limit, limit is zero. If limit is zero, we know nothing. Test for divergence is not applicable. Okay, this means we will try ratio. We can try some comparison, maybe. We can try, you may try anything what you think will work. Yeah, but ratio is quite, yes, quite. Uh, Solid tool. <laughs> okay. A sub n plus one over A sub n absolute value. Limit at infinity. Okay. A sub n plus one is one over n plus one. 
plus factorial and dividing by one over n factorial, I will multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, the limit. And we will keep n factorial, n plus one factorial, I can rewrite as n factorial times n plus one. That's, we also know this simplification. Uh, this is gone. And the limit of one over n plus one at infinity is of course zero. Zero is less than one. That's we may say this is absolutely convert. This series is absolutely convergent by ratio test. As we can see how nice is ratio test. You will like it. Ratio test and the other one, root test, I will introduce in a second, is also yes, similar and they are quite solid. And it's a nice quick rigor to follow. Okay. Oh, okay. I have this one. Now this one is crazy. It's negative one to the n n squared, the power form, two to the n exponential form, two n factorial, factorial form. I, I definitely, I'm definitely trying ratio test because we know by creating this ratio, we may eliminate a couple of, I mean, simplify it in some way. And hopefully the limit is not one <laughs> because if the limit is one, the ratio test is inconclusive. A sub n plus one over A sub n. Okay, let's be really careful. Negative one to the n will be gone because absolute value. That's mean let's create A sub n plus one. n plus one squared, two to the n plus one. Okay, I can say this way. And now two times n plus one factorial. That two we have to distribute. Yeah, that's we have to be really careful. And dividing by a sub n means multiplying by the reciprocal, 2n factorial, n squared, 2 to the n. Absolute value, but we can see that all of the terms are positive. We don't need. Okay, let's make a little bit clear. n plus 1 squared, 2 to the n times 2 to the 1, 2n factorial n squared, two to the n. Now, this one, I can maybe use different color, will be two n plus two factorial when I distribute. Two n plus two factorial is number greater, two greater than two n factorial, okay? That's when we have number greater by two, like for instance, seven factorial and five factorial, or possibly I can switch because we have mm, yeah, 2n plus 2 factorial in the denominator. So you know, we have 5 factorial, 7 factorial. I can rewrite 7 as a number 2 less, 5 factorial, and then times 6 times 7 because we have to stop at 7. And now we can easily cancel out. So I will do the same. 2n plus 2, I will factorial. I will rewrite as a number two less, two n factorial times two n plus one, two n plus two. It's the same, six, seven, six, seven. Okay, now the factorial is gone, exponential form is gone. And what are we getting? Are we getting finite number two? n plus 1 squared. That's we have 2n squared. And in the denominator, we have 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2, and n squared. Okay, we actually have n squared versus n, n, n squared versus n to the power of 4. Denominator is winning with the, lim with the degree, and this is limited infinity, 0. 0 is less than 1. I mean, this infinite series is absolutely convergence by ratio test. So we can see it's just since you have to just take a pencil and the paper and practice. And so you may get back to the point that you don't see the solution and do it again. It will be good practice. And you will be so satisfied with yourself that you can get the same answer. Okay. And I have this one n to the n over n factorial. 
we may still use ratio test and let's actually let's try since we're practicing together or you can probably see right away when you will grab the formula and apply the nth term divergence test test for divergence we can see that this limit is infinity because n to the n it's growing much much faster yes the relative rates of growth than n factorial at infinity we did prove this possibly at yeah with the sequences but yeah at this point we're looking at the limit limit is um, different than zero limit is actually infinity that means this series is divergent okay and i can say by test for divergence or oh, n-term divergence test, the same thing, okay? But let's try, actually. It's interesting, the limit. Let's actually try ratio test, test. And you can try, you can do exactly the same. Yeah? Please pause the video and try to do it. Limit, n goes to the infinity, n, oh, no, not yet, not yet a sub n plus one over a sub n absolute value i wonder if the limit will be it's interesting let's check okay a sub n plus one we will have n plus one to the power of n plus one over n plus one factorial and dividing by a sub n means multiplying by reciprocal Okay, we don't need absolute value because each term inside is positive. Okay, I will say n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1 to the power of 1, n factorial. Now, n plus 1 factorial, I can rewrite as n factorial times n plus 1. Okay, now we can cancel out n plus 1 and n factorial. Let's mean what? So we have we have n plus one to the power of n and n to the power of n. We may combine them. Hmm, how can I? Okay, let me write here. We can say n plus one over n to the n because it's the same. Then I can say one plus one over n. Correct, am I right? Because n over n is one, one over n. And I think we recognize this. We recognize this limit. This limit one plus one over n to the power of n is e. Because that was my point, yes? Just to recall, to practice that limit is e. e is definitely greater than one. That's we may also conclude, yeah? It's not <laughs> it's this infinite series is divergent we knew it <laughs> by ratio test because the limit is greater than one the limit of that ratio yeah you may use this one or you may use this one okay and the next test the last test is root test it's similar conclusion, but we computing, we evaluating a little bit different limit. If the limit at infinity of the end root of absolute value of the term. Uh, and it's the same conclusion. If this limit is less than one, finite number less than one, then the absolute, uh, then the infinite series is absolutely convergent. Therefore, it's convergent. If this limit at infinity, the nth root of absolute value of a sub n is equal to the finite number greater than one or infinity, then the series is divergent. Yeah? That's, that's it. If that limit of that nth root is one, absolute value of the terms, then the ray, uh, oh, it's supposed to be root. <laughs> You see, I just, the root test is inconclusive, inconclusive, right? So we can see similar justification, but different limit. Yeah? And let's, and we have to remember, we just compute, this is the test, yeah? Taking that nth root, it's a test, it's a tool. 
also we may notice conditional convergence yeah it's not uh, if we're getting divergent it's just divergent yeah it will be no room for conditional convergence if it's absolutely convergent it's absolutely convergent we know what this means okay and let's solve maybe one or two problems with the root test the root test will be nicely applicable if like for what kind of, kind of formulas for instance this one if the entire formula is taken to the power of n because we may think, oh, taking, applying the nth root, we can cancel out that, that power of n. Yeah, that means since I see this, yeah, I will try a root test. Let's try limit at infinity of the nth root of absolute value of the terms. Okay. We can see each term is positive, then I can skip absolute value. I can just copy this, it will be positive. And taking the nth root of the quantity taken to the power of n, that is cancelled out. Then we can see we just have this. Okay, and this limit is. 2n versus 3n is two thirds is less than one. And then I can say this infinite series is absolutely convergent by root test. Yeah, because we got a limit of the nth root of the, n, the absolute value of the terms equals to two thirds less than one. Perfect, so quick. So again, quite powerful test tool. Okay, and let's do one more. And now you can practice. <laughs> now you're good with, yes, with this concept. Exercise number seven, uh, infinite series from one to infinity, nth root of two minus one to the power of n. If we look at the limit, the limit is zero, right? Because this will be one, one minus one, zero, zero to the power of n number is zero. That means test for divergence doesn't work. But since we see the entire formula rise to the power of n, let's try the root test. Limit at infinity of the nth root of absolute value of a sub n. Limit at infinity of the nth root, and I can possibly put the absolute value since we may not be sure if this is positive or negative, but it is yeah, positive. Okay, nth root and the n power is cancelled out. And then we do have nth root minus one. I can keep absolute value, but we know this is always greater than one. The terms are definitely positive. And nth root of 2, I can rewrite as a 2 to the power of 1 over n. Okay? And 1 over big number is a small number. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 1. 0 is less than 1. And if the number is less than 1, if that limit is less than 1, we can say this infinite series is absolutely convergent by root test. Okay, I think it is nice session with a seven strong examples. You may redo them again, and this will be good review before any assignment. Okay, thank you.